Why am I always going down the rabbit hole, the online rabbit hole of interior design based in the UK? I feel like I have one too many videos on interior decor in London or outside of London or just anywhere in the UK. I guess I'm very drawn to it. But what can I say? We're back <laughs> with another video on some really cool homes in London, maybe some in Essex, or I don't really know these places. Elmbridge? Surrey? Surrey? Somewhere in the UK. Somewhere around London. But anyways, a subscriber of mine, Scarlett, shout out to Scarlett, also love that name, Scarlett, DM'd me this house and was like, I love this home. And I was like, I do too. And then I started checking out this site called The Modern House. I personally love a curated real estate site where you can go on and just browse really cool homes. And I've never really seen a site like this, The Modern House. And it's all homes in London, basically. And they're all really cool. I was diving through this all last night because I did smoke a little pot. And when I smoke pot... I'll go down a real estate rabbit hole or I'll find places to rent in Los Angeles. I spent a lot of time on like hot pads. But anyways, let's look at these cool ass houses from London, in London and around London because we love London and I do. I need to meet my, my British man, you know, my future hus is definitely going to be from London. Probably not. I'll probably just like end up being from Chicago. He probably went to my high school. <laughs> no, no. Okay, let's start. This is the house that Scarlett sent me and caught my attention quite a bit because first off, the outside is interesting. I've never really seen anything quite like it and I like it and I like it. But wait till you see the inside because it's Something I've never really seen before. I don't really know how to even describe this style. But we start off in this dining room with all of this really crazy wood detailing on the walls, which I really, I just love a wood wall. And I like the decor. I like a giant cheetah rug and the decor in this, the walls, everything. So good. Now check out this hallway. The sleekness of the staircase is so cool. I love how there's no paneling. It's just sleek wood everywhere. And it has a little sheen to it, which I like. It's like this mid-century type feel, but it's not a mid-century home. And if you watch my channel, you know I love when people mix styles. And I think that's why I'm very attracted to this house. Even the TV room is cool. If you took away the wood walls, it wouldn't be that unique. And it just goes to show that you could buy a really plain house and then put in really cool wood cabinetry and detailing and it will already make it feel unique and cool and different. I also like that little mid-century type light fixture or Danish light fixture, whatever that is. Leather couch is not so much, but this is real estate, so we are looking at the house. Also, the photography on this site is so great. This little moment of looking into the dining room, showing the wood detailing, this is just like, this belongs on Architectural Digest. Real estate photos can make such a huge difference. Bad real estate photos are my nightmare. I feel like I could do a whole video on bad real estate photos and staging. The staging nowadays has gotten so terrible, and with the right staging, you could sell a property so much quicker. It's the same thing as prop styling. As a prop stylist, when I go in and style, you know, a set to sell a certain sofa, let's say, the design of the room makes a huge difference. Like even this is a stunning photo. The curtains are really bad, but the photo is really nice. And same with this. Oh, this is such a cool photo. And just cool walls and wood floors and that light fixture is cool. Now the kitchen is where I do get, <laughs> I do get lost a little. It looks like there was some design choices that I don't, I don't know who did that. But what's interesting about this kitchen, though, is that it really takes one thing of inspiration to change your mind on a certain design style. 
And for me, I did an architectural digest job. I prop styled a job for Richard Edlund, who did the visual effects for a lot of the Star Wars movies. But anyways, he lives in a Nutra house. I always say that word wrong. Nutra? Neutra house? Which are very cool homes out here in Los Angeles designed by Neutra. But anyways, the kitchen in Richard Edlund's house, they both have the same name, looked kind of like this with the weird tile floor and white cabinets and I'm kind of into it in a weird way I've always been into that kitchen when I first saw it I was like this is weird like why does this house have this black tile but I'm also now into it so this kitchen feels like it could be saved if you just replace the whole center island which is just so strange and that weird wine glass chandelier get rid of the and sign that's pretty much it but I guess I'm into that tile in a weird way all all because of Richard. Both the Richards, I guess. <laughs> Back to the stairwell. Pretty incredible. I'm obsessed with the sleek wood railing. And this window is really cool. The high ceilings. I like how they put in art. Look at this hallway. So into this. Obviously, I think you need some new carpet. But I like all of the older fixtures. And again, the photography is just pretty cool. This room is cute. It looks like it's painted chilled wine. <laughs> and I love the big cabinet. And that little vanity is so adorable, but you know, again, real estate. This room is interesting, a sink. I feel like they used to do that, sink in the main room. I would keep it with that mirror. And I love all the crown molding and how they painted below it. Look at this bathroom. Look how good that bathroom is. And you know, it's so sad with these types of places because I feel like there's a 50% chance that someone will rip that all out. That's such a fun, cool bathroom. I love all the colors. And yes, I know a colored tub and a colored sink is pretty outdated, but just keep it. It all comes full circle. Colored tile, all of this, so good. I love how they have different curtains in each room that are a unique pattern. I don't know if I necessarily like the curtains or the valances are kind of strange, but I like people who just have unique taste. That's the thing. If you have unique taste, it could be so terrible or so opposite of anything I like but I can appreciate it. This spot, also London. What is this building? This is so incredible <laughs> that you could live in a building like this that has such unique architecture. This is something, I'm, again, I've, I haven't seen stuff like this. That's just for sale, you know? Like I could stumble upon this stuff on Pinterest maybe, but this is a real home for sale. The inside is pretty modern and sleek, but there's so many unique details that warm it up, like the ceiling and the red beams. There's concrete on the walls, but the wooden floors have this cool pattern to them. I don't normally go for a modern space, but I can really appreciate one. And look at the kitchen, all concrete, but then adding in this type of wood. And I feel like this is what I would think I would see a lot more in Tokyo, this very clean, modern, space with very clean wood this feels japanese to me but i could be wrong but i'm into it look at this room it's a dome i don't know what the walls are made out of but i'm intrigued and i love it tbh this hallway leading into the bedroom it's starting to feel kind of spaceship and if you look at the bedroom it's so interesting the mix of windows the concrete the textures i feel like behind the bed is like corkboard almost and then the wood it really helps make it feel warm another crazy hallway with a cool skylight and concrete walls down into whatever this room is is this the main room I'm not too sure but look at the architecture here there's green beams there's red there's wood it looks almost like bamboo on the ceiling I love the mix of materials in this spot as we continue to browse online, I do want to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. A VPN is essentially a virtual private network that covers up and hides what you're doing online. It's actually a really great safety tool for blocking out people who are trying to snoop on you or trying to figure out your location. I've actually been using Surfshark VPN for years because I studied abroad in college in Rome 
And I wanted to watch my Netflix and I had to download a VPN in order to do so. A VPN allows you to access servers within other countries, which is super helpful. I'm constantly working at a coffee shop, so I always turn on my Surfshark VPN when I'm there. That just allows a little bit more safety, especially with public Wi-Fi at like an airport. People are always trying to dig into your stuff. You can send or receive files a lot more securely. A lot of times when you're shopping, websites will show you prices based off of your location. And if you turn on Surfshark VPN while you're shopping, especially, you know, for flights, you can catch some, some great deals. There really is no risk with trying Surfshark VPN, and they do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Head to the Surfshark link in my description and use my code PAGEWASSEL for an extra three months free. And thanks again, Surfshark VPN, for sponsoring this video. Another really cool London gem with more industrial architecture. But I love a high ceiling and a really large window is very fun. This one actually feels a little more London feeling with the backyard, a nice enclosed garden. You know that's my fave. This guy in Wick, Wick, Wincombe, Gloucestershire. Oh my god. Where is this? I can't even say it. Some town in England. Somewhere, somewhere here. Okay. This one I found super interesting because the outside is like a cottage, well, a giant cottage. All of these are worth millions, but that's the best real estate to look at. But yes, the outside of this felt very like old cottagey, but when you go inside, it has a modern twist, which is interesting. And you can kind of see that with this little glass box. I'm into that. These first few rooms are just plain and modern, but it's interesting because it's like these modern windows, but then there's some old stone. And then here, it's a very modern little, almost like a kid's room, and then really old fireplace. I like that. And look at the outside. You wouldn't expect the inside to have this modern look at all, actually. You would think the inside would be very old. And what's that roof called where it's like the whole house and shingles? What is that called? So it's so cool to look at and so different. I think the outside really drew my attention into this spot with the cool trees and this little wooden Cape Cod walkway and then the modern glass structure connected to a really old home. I love when... Things in interior design are just so opposite of each other. I don't know why. And this area is interesting because they kept a lot of the old beams but kind of transformed it into this modular room. I think it's a very interesting twist on interiors. And this is a fun little kid's room. I love when rooms have different levels and platforms when architecture kind of like breaks free in that way. I love that look where there's... A platform for the bed basically. I take it back this is definitely not a kids room because there's a bath there I mean unless they're lucky but then there's like this shower van this is a cool room and I like how they painted the middle wall yellow. Also just to note a lime green stair rail is such an interesting idea to just throw that in there. This is why we look at these things that is that is inspo. And back to this lovely backyard kind of crazy that People get to live like this. Stunning. Moving on. This is real estate porn. <laughs> this whole site. I'm obsessed with everything on this site. All of the photography just feels like it belongs in Architectural Digest. This outdoor photo makes me want to live in this style home, whatever this is. And look at the inside. With this brick, with the ceiling, with the architecture, with the cool carpet. Look at the multicolored Roman shades. I think the kitchen is interesting. Again, they have these crazy Roman shades that I like that they did that. And again, all the different materials and jolts of walls and architecture is giving me a high unlike, <laughs> unlike any other. <laughs> and I hope this type of photo pleases your eye as well. It's, it's basically putting me in a good mood looking at these places. It almost feels like it should put me in a bad mood because I can't live here, but I personally am into these very simple bedrooms with crazy architecture in there. Look at that closet vanity thing. Is that is it more common? I know back in the day it was common to find sinks in the middle of the bedroom, but was it more common in the UK than the US? I like I like this. I mean, you would you would have to replace the carpet. 
I even like this room is so cute for a little kid's room. I'm also into this bathroom. I think it's the color in the tub. Just into, into it. Another very simple bedroom. But again, if you just replace the carpet, I think the architecture does it all. You could keep it simple. Oh, and I guess they just have this gazebo in the back. I don't know what that is. But anyways, let's keep going because there's more. There's more. I thought this one was interesting because it's almost like a studio loft that maybe, you know, one person could live in and they did it up so interestingly, interestingly, okay? I'm really into the beams on the ceiling and how there's this little hallway up here, whatever this loft area is, that there's a shelf and then there's a bunch of storage underneath. It's almost like whoever bought this, it probably wasn't decked out in this loft way and they built it up into this amazing space to live in if, you know, one or two people. The entry is cool. I like the wood on the ceilings. A lot of carpet in these spots, which is, you know, sometimes it's fine, but I don't, know, I don't like living on other people's carpet. You just don't, it's like, what is what has been there? Depends how outdated it is. I do feel like this place is bigger than we think. I mean, there's a full-on eight-person dining area. So maybe more than one or two people could live here. There's this back office with crazy shelves. You know, I love floor-to-ceiling, wall-to-wall shelves. And I just think this loft adds so much interest. I'm not sure I love those, like, bamboo dividers. I don't like when people put in, like, weird, like, slate, like, wood slate slate wood plank dividers like this I don't, I don't I don't really like that that kind of reminds me of it a quaint little back room again wood ceilings great wood built-ins love all these built-ins oh look there's a kid's room so this is a lot bigger than we think I should have known I was like wow they're just gonna include a little studio but this is so cute look at that okay moving on <laughs> how about this guy you know right on the streets of London it's almost like it was a restaurant and they made it into an apartment. <laughs> but look at the inside, the wood floors, the brick, the ceiling, the exposed piping. I like their choice of continuing the green on the inside. I don't know if I necessarily love that corkboard wall. Maybe, maybe just fill it up a little more. Look at this bath. It almost looks Photoshopped. The color of the cabinets is incredible with the pop of the red. This is so cool. I've never seen something like this. If I were living in London right now, I feel like this is the type of place I would want to live in. Something that's right in the city. You can walk right outside. It's unique. It has character. It has a skylight. It has incredible windows and a little backyard. And then you go down into the basement that isn't dreary because there's a skylight. It has incredible ceilings. I will say I would get rid of that lime wash walls. Especially in a basement. I feel like if you're going to lime wash, definitely don't do it in a basement. It just starts to feel like musty dusty, in my opinion. But this spot was cool. Another cool spot. A quick and little cool spot. Not so little. Worth millions. I don't know if it's the photography or what it is that really attracts me to every single spot listed on this site. But this little home is so cute with the little doors. The three little, the blue, the off blue, the yellow. And this place is so unique in a way that kind of reminds me of Copenhagen in a sense and very childlike. I don't particularly love the different wood little colored plank things on the floor, but the kitchen and this view itself is so interesting. And again, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Copenhagen design. I sometimes love when people take interior design and kind of transform their house for kids. Like it's very kid focused and I feel like this house is like that and I do like that approach sometimes. I find it very fun when I go into a home that feels like kids, like youth, like this. Like I feel like you can tell someone's a crafter or it looks like they're like a, a designer of some sort and the floor is so interesting. Like why? Why that actually? I do like the kitchen. This shot alone, I like that. The bedroom is cute. A lot of people using this chilled wine yellow. I think that's the color of the future. I use a lot of yellows. People like to say I like to use a lot of yellows and greens and browns, and I agree. This is so opposite of my style that I had to show it, but I just enjoyed touring this spot. 
did you enjoy touring this spot? That's it for today's cool real estate (laughs) in London or outside of London or in the UK or wherever we were. Please send me real estate sites or just listings of amazing architecture, design, places for sale in let's we got to move along we got to go we got to go to Asia I want to go to Tokyo I know I've been doing a lot of sit down videos lately which I think you all are fine with but I do have some more fun things I'm just waiting until these pillows are launched which launch April 7th if you want a pillow this is our last round of pillows for my company was that we're launching so get one while they're hot and it's our last it's the last time you're gonna get a pillow from us from me and Kate but anyways, yeah, I am i can't dive into the content I want to create until these are launched because I'm just, I'm a little overwhelmed with my tasks. All right. I'm going to go have a snack. I'm going to eat a biscuit. I'm going to eat a biscuit. Actually, that's very London of me. Very British of me. And then um, I'm going to go walk the reservoir. It's a little chilly, but, you know, once you start walking, then you're good. That's it. For today, see you next week, see you next Sunday. I'm always showing up on a Sunday. I'm very committed to you all. You're all my best friends. (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Okay, bye.